Stalin's affection for his daughter contrasted with the harshness and toughness of his political image. Recall that Svetlana wrote in her memoirs that the time they spent together, though not much, was unforgettable at every turn. Can you imagine? In those cozy moments, Stalin was as warm, accommodating, and loving as any father could be. But it's no secret to say that Stalin had a negative image, right? His actions have caused a lot of controversy and criticism throughout history. You may have heard of his Great Purge policy, which was a heartbreaking time. Countless lives were lost as a result of his actions, whether for political or other reasons, and I think we can all agree that it was a dark period that we don't like to talk about in our history books. And then that time of fear and uncertainty, when people lived in his shadow, careful and frightened, and when even the mere suspicion of opposition to him could lead to tragedy. Sounds horrible, doesn't it? That period, when individual freedoms and rights were so grossly violated, was a warning to all how power can be abused. But, you know what, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Under Stalin's rule, a massive famine also broke out in the Soviet Union. But Stalin sold the Soviet Union's food to other countries in exchange for investment in industrialization, leaving the Soviet people to endure hunger and poverty. Can you imagine that scenario? Your leader takes your food and gives it to someone else, and all you can do is sit back and watch your family, friends, and neighbors endure starvation. What kind of despair and helplessness that would be. However, like most historical figures we see, Stalin is portrayed in multiple ways. There is undeniably a lot of criticism and controversy about him, but after delving deeper into his life, you may find that there are many other sides to him that we have not noticed before, especially in his family life. We will analyze this in detail below. 1. Stalin and his first wife. Ekaterina Kato Svanids is a very interesting character yet. She was born in Georgia, which was still part of the Russian Empire at that time. Her eyes were said to be particularly attractive, and she had a very interesting family. Her brother, Alexander Svanids, was one of the colleagues of the Bolshevik Revolutionary Movement and a good friend of Joseph Stalin. It is said that they first met in 1903, when Ekaterina was still working in the family cotton mill, a very ordinary woman, but her beauty and personality apparently captivated Stalin. Affection quickly developed between them. Stalin knew that he was impressed. He had always been an idealist, bent on his Marxist theories, but in the presence of Ekaterina, he found that he too longed for a dull and ordinary life. He begins to spend time with her, gradually changing his work-obsessed lifestyle. The change is so subtle yet far-reaching that because of Ekaterina's presence, the idealistic Stalin, who is obsessed with his ideals, begins to learn to appreciate the little things in life. Like those everyday things they spent together, the breeze on Ekaterina's smiling face, her silky hair floating in the air, the dinners Stalin prepared for her, or the walks they took together in the twilight, watching the sun set. Of course, Stalin was far from being the iron-fisted ruler he was at that time, and was probably more of an idealistic, passionate young revolutionary. His relationship with Ekaterina was certainly one of the most personal and emotionally charged chapters of his life. In their romance, Stalin was the one who took more of the initiative to pursue. He tries to impress Ekaterina with his actions and words, telling her that he cares about her and wants to share his life with her. Their conversations always bring joy to each other's hearts. This romance gradually feeds into Stalin's life and work as well, as he becomes more subdued and has the patience to deal with difficulties and challenges. Well, as for Ekaterina… I would say that she was a light in Stalin's life. She warmed his heart and opened his emotions. How did she do that? Stalin was with her that day. He watched her quietly doing her crafts with a smile of contentment and joy, and that moment filled him with peace. He knew that he wanted to be with her, to share the sweetness and the astringency of life. Being two very practical people, Stalin and Ekaterina's wedding did not have many romantic elements. They decided to get married in 1906. The title was not chosen in a cathedral or a lively ballroom, but in a place they both loved, Georgia. It was an early fall morning when Stalin proposed to her on a hill in front of their house, 
when the sunlight poured over them in all its vibrant beauty. That day, they walked into the calling of their hearts like any ordinary newlyweds, dressed in simple, festive clothing, holding hands. In fact, you hit the nail on the head. Their wedding was like an ordinary bazaar, yet full of warmth and love. After the wedding, they were content with the life they already had. All they wished was that such days would flow on in peace. Stalin had told Ekaterina that he wanted to walk hand in hand with her through the long years and watch their children grow up together. Their daily life was very mundane, but made memorable by their presence. They loved waking up in the morning and enjoying a hot breakfast together. Stalin, on the other hand, was especially good at making coffee, grinding rich, flavorful beans that gave a warm start to the day, and Ekaterina loved to clean, and she always kept their home lively and tidy. She would open the windows to let the fresh air and sunshine flood the house, and she always said that this is what makes a home full of life. In Stalin's eyes, Ekaterina was like a haven for him, a warm current in the midst of the pressures of work and life. At the same time, they each try their best to help each other realize their dreams and expectations. They encourage each other to convey their true selves at all times, no matter what ideas or dreams they are willing to have. When Ekaterina wanted to start her own little craft store, Stalin showed his support for her. But sometimes arguments could not be avoided. Once they had a disagreement over a small matter in the family. I remember the day when Ekaterina was at home fiddling with her newly purchased furniture, while Stalin thought she should go out and enjoy the sunshine outside instead of staying at home. Their views differed, and a verbal argument began. But they eventually reconciled. However, happy times were short-lived when Ekaterina unfortunately contracted a serious illness. Stalin was very sad when Ekaterina was sick. He tried to be by her side as much as possible, helping her with things and trying to ease her pain. They would look out the window in the afternoon sun, talking and reminiscing about the good times they had shared. As heartbreaking as it was to watch her struggle with her illness, he never left her for a moment. But one night, at the age of 27, Ekaterina left him. At that moment, Stalin's world seemed to lose its color. His heart was empty. Legend has it that at her funeral, Stalin shed tears of sorrow and made a striking remark to the effect that she was the only person who ever gave me a taste of happiness and I destroyed even her life as an outlaw. This statement is many times interpreted as Stalin's fond memories and guilt over Ekaterina. From then on, every morning when he woke up, Stalin had the difficult task of coming to terms with the fact that Ekaterina was no longer with him. This was the first woman he had ever loved, and every familiar corner, every little thing, reminded him that she had been here. The death of his wife hit Stalin hard. Although some sources say tuberculosis was the cause of her death, others suspect it may have been something else. Regardless, her untimely death had a profound effect on Stalin's life. And some even say that it turned out to be a turning point in his personality of indifference and cruelty.